Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery, Part 381. And we're continuing with our lesson titled, Message of the Saints. This will be Part 4. Before we begin the uh, lesson, I want to preface it with a statement. As we go into the scriptures of these lessons, I want to advise that we look at it from the standpoint of a time in the future, events that have not yet taken place, a new reality that we are going to be entering into. And in this reality, everything currently is going to change. <laughs> in that light, the format of what we currently look at as religion, particularly Christianity, is going to undergo radical change. The structure, the presentation of the things of God are not going to continue to be experienced the way they currently are. God is not pleased with the way things have developed since the time that the Lord ascended back to heaven. No, pleased. The directive that the Lord has given has not been undertaken. The leadership has not been responsive. The format that was laid down as to how the body of Christ functions has been radically altered. The Father is not going to allow this to be repeated. So in the time in which we are heading, the Father is going to inaugurate the function of Christianity the way that it was originally intended not the way it is currently experienced. With that, having said that, we will now enter into our lesson. Scripture indicates the gathering will connect together events and activities in the heavens and in the earth. Currently, there is a separation between events, activities, comprehension of things that are taking place that pertain to Christ in the heavens and in the earth. There is a separation. At the time of the gathering, the separation will no longer exist. There will be a connection, a unity of events taking place in the heavens and on the earth in a unified progression. Now, what we find Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 10, gives us this stipulation. Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, <coughs> he might gather together in one, in unity, all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. There is going to be a connection between the things of Christ that are transpiring in the heavens and in the earth. A unity that currently does not exist. Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture indicates this is done so that the sheep, those that are gathered, will be prepared for the stupendous events to come. God wants those of earth to understand the progression of events leading to the rapture, the tribulation, and his coming. They have not been given as the Father has directed. 
Turn to Revelation, the 22nd chapter, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. So the Lord revealed these things 2,000 years ago. And 2,000 years later, the body of Christ is totally ignorant of the revelation. Therefore, the Lord is going to take it out of the hands of humanity. He's going to place it in the hands of divinity. Scripture teaches the book of Revelation will be the sole source of all knowledge. Revelation 22, verse 10. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. John was told this 2,000 years ago. Don't seal up the revelation of the book. It's time for the churches, for the saints to comprehend it. 2,000 years later, they're totally oblivious, totally ignorant to the message of the book of Revelation. Number two. The book, access to the book, and revelation knowledge is only going to be in the hands of designated revelators called the Brotherhood of the Prophets. <clears throat> revelation 22, verse 6. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets, holy prophets, sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. The message has not been received. So they're going to be taken out of the hands of the current authorities and placed in the hands of the holy prophets. Revelation 22, verse 9. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book worship God. It's going to be in the hands of the prophets to manifest the revelation to the church community. Revelation 10, verse 5 to 7. Josie, where are these holy prophets currently? in obscurity their time has not come they're being prepared for the beginning of sorrows at which time they make their appearance and they're given the authority to teach their authority to prepare the sheep for entrance into the communities they're sitting in groups like ours yes Revelation 10 Five to seven. Now we see something very interesting about the proclamation of this angel, which we have <coughs> described as being YHVH. He makes specific proclamations, not of himself, but from the book that he is carrying. Starting in verse five. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven, 
And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he, God, hath declared to his servants the prophets. So God has entrusted the prophets with totality of access to the plan of the Father. Outside of the prophets, there is no valid authority to give forth revelation. Now, what we find, the scripture indicates a progression in the line of the prophets. The function of the prophet is always on earth, never in heaven. Why? Because the prophet is a stand-in, a spokesman for God. At the time that God descends to earth in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, the ministry of the prophets will be completed. He will need no intercessor because God himself will be speaking. Okay. <clears throat> so even though the earthly prophet is the counterpart to the heavenly custodial angel. Mm -hmm. No profiting shall be done in the heavens. Oh, no, no, <laughs> no, not at all. Praise the Lord. God needs no stand-in to represent him. So we see the scripture indicates a progression in the line of the prophets. Those that have been given authority to dispense the revelation of God. What is this line of progression? Those of the time of the apostles and the faithful servants of the beginning of sorrow's era will go on to higher levels, angelic levels. In other words, they will continue the prophetic office dispensing revelation until the gathering of the sheep at the coming of the Lord. But that doesn't preclude a non-profit apostle of today being a star of the, the church. When you say non-profit apostle of well, today. What, I, what I'm bringing out is that the stars of the churches are not only what we would call prophets, but also apostles. Oh yeah, well the prophetic office includes Apostles, okay, so prophets, and teachers. As opposed to the act of pro 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 yeah. mm -hmm. prophesying. Okay. Yeah, there's a vision in it, but the body itself are brothers. Gotcha. Apostles, prophets, and teachers. Mm -hmm. Now we see, at the time of the coming of the Lord to gather, <coughs> gather the sheep, this will be the time in which the prophets who have been faithful will be given reward with a higher position. Turn to Psalms 50, verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me. So we're talking about the Lord coming for the gathering. The first to be gathered are going to be the prophets. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. They're the first are going to be gathered, and then the sheep. Those that will go on to become the elders will experience the broader gathering. Matthew 24. Just before we go to Matthew 24. Mm -hmm. So the blessing that the prophets receive, we discussed this in last night's uh, lesson, mm -hmm. is 
the elevation. That's, yes. that's, 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 we're talking about the same thing, Matthew 24, 47. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's their inheritance. Right. Matthew 24, we're going to read verses 40 to 47. Now, Jesus is describing the time of his coming to gather the sheep as a time in which it will not be expected. In other words, he's going to appear suddenly. Verse 40. Then shall two be in the field, one shall be taken, the other left. Remember we read Psalms 50. Gather my saints together unto me. So when he speaks this, this is the result of what he's speaking. It pertains to those who have made a covenant with him by sacrifice. Two <clears throat> shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Now the people who read this think he's referring to the rapture. He's not. He's referring to the gathering. Verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. So what you find here is a picture of events taking place from the time of the judgment, the collapse of the Adamic order, the governments of the Adamic order, the rise of the Fourth Empire. Throughout all this, the faithful and wise servant has stepped into his calling and has been faithfully feeding the sheep, preparing them for this time, the time when the Lord would appear to gather them to their communities. So we notice that the language employed here in Matthew 24, mm -hmm. 40 to 43 is the same as that as Luke 17. Yeah. Except the last verse in Luke 17 refers to the gathering. Well, it's referring to the eagles right. being gathered, which is the same as what you have here. Gather my elect who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Mm -hmm. One will be in the bed, one, two will be in the bed, one taken, two in the field, one taken. It's all the same. Basically, the prophets, the teachers, the faithful servants who have been feeding his sheep since the time of the collapse of this current order. Right. But the rest of, the, the rest of that uh, chapter, Luke 17, the last, the last verses hmm. is about the rapture. Let's see. From 30, verse 30 onwards, Luke 17, 30 onwards. Let's take a look. He's talking ma mainly about specifics and then he goes into generalities. Okay. Which is the last verse. The okay, Luke 17, you're saying verse 30? 30. 30? Yeah. 36. Even though shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed, and that day he which shall be upon the housetop, and the stuff in the house that I'm not, and now to take it away, it is in the field, let him likewise not return back. 
Remember Lot's wife, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, whoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. So you that night there shall be two in one bed, one shall be taken, the other left, two women are okay. So uh, up to 36, two men shall be in the field, one shall be taken. There in Luke 17, we're, we're talking about the gap, uh, excuse me, we're talking about the rapture. But it's only in verse 37 where we see the eagles that we're referring to. Uh, well, if I've, if I've given that impression, I have to retract it. No, this is all the gathering. Thank you. Okay. This is all the gathering. That's troubled me for a while. All right. Yeah. Now we know. No, he's talking about... Um, that aspect of the gathering. Okay. As a matter of fact, go to Luke 21. Mm -hmm. This is a picture of Psalms 50. 50. Mm -hmm. Luke 21, 25. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity to see in the waves roaring. Man's heart is failing them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So this is going to happen suddenly. Yeah. <clears throat> then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a, in a cloud with power and great glory. And then drop down to verse 35 and 36. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Yep. So it's not the rapture. He's going to descend totally to ground level to dispense the reward to the prophets and establish the communities. Excellent. Takes care of that. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, you say, well, if the prophets are going to be raised to a high level to be the overseers of the church, remember the heavens and the earth are not connected. Yes. What happens? Well, what will happen is God will raise up other prophets. Turn to Joel, second chapter, verse 28 to 29. Other prophets to be on the earth. Yes. Yes. You have to have prophets connecting with the angels in heaven right. to give to the churches to but prepare the two them connect, for the, the two groups connecting. Are, have to be prophets, as we see with the Revelation twenty. Yes. Joel, the second chapter, twenty-eight to twenty-nine. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. Why is he saying all flesh? Because it's going to be a community wide. The church is going to undergo the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just like they did on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in old days will I pour out my spirit. It's the same thing that's going to happen as it did in the day of Pentecost. What it was saying, well, these people are speaking in tongues. What's going on? Paul said, it's, this is Joel, the second chapter. Uh, but he didn't understand that this was the first phase of God's plan for his people. So in this respect, the communities are going to experience the power of the Holy Spirit. When that happens, you're going to have prophets raised up <clears throat> that will prophesy. Why? Because they are going to be the connection on earth between 
the angel overseer in the community of the saints. So when we return to the sons and daughters, um, sons and daughters prophesying old men having dreams, so on and so forth, all of these individuals mentioned are family members of the prototypus who's in the community. The, yeah, they constitute the body of Christ. Just as it was in the book of Acts. The Holy Spirit fell on those people the day of Pentecost. Everybody received a gift. When you read the book of Acts, you go into community. Paul went into a community. Philip had seven daughters that prophesied. Right. But the point I'm making is every person that we've mentioned is a member of the community, the gathered community. Yes. So therefore, they would be of the Protodicus line because they would be the children, the family members. That's what I'm asking. Well, no. Okay. No. The, the Protodicus is a spiritual uh, group. But what you're going to have is physical, you know, a person marries somebody, you have children, but they're all dedicated to the Lord. The, the Protodicus is the head of the household. That's what I'm talking about. He's the one that's going to be the one that receives revelation knowledge from the prophet if he's not a prophet himself and just the way it was the day of the book of Acts you had families um, I'm quite sure people like Apollos Silas were married men they had children they had families and stuff but they were still exercise the office of apostle prophet or teacher but it's because of the Holy Spirit connection in them that those who are the say say the household, those who are the family members are receiving it. If they weren't the family members, they wouldn't be receiving it. Exactly. exactly. But they're also become members of the body of Christ. In general, yeah. And what you have the community, that's why it says I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh, because everybody is connected okay. to the body of Christ. You have ministry offices, but you have the change in that the apostle prophet and teacher are the main uh, authority figures in the community and uh, it will be a connection between the earth and the heaven because they'll be connected to the angel that is overseeing the community just like you look in the book of Revelation the angel connected with the apostle John who connected with the churches this time it's going to be in such a way that if somebody misuses their authority it's going to be instant retribution so in Revelation 22 Starting in verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. So, what's going to happen is the angel is going to commune with the prophet in the community. The prophet is going to speak what he heard out of the book of Revelation to the community. Everybody's going to hear. Families, whoever. This is what he's referring to. I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man should add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So when the proclamation is made and the community here, the church service is going to be a time in which everyone gathers to hear what the prophet has heard from the angel overseer. And he speaks the revelation that he's been given from the book of Revelation pertaining to that group, that community. It could be something dealing with a future event. It could be something dealing with a need that needs to be taken care of by the community or a plethora of things. But they're going to hear all this 
out of the book of Revelation. Right. That's regulating the life of the community. If somebody hears this and they distort it by adding something to it to make themselves of a higher position of people listening to them immediately, that person is destined that when the plagues fall, he's going to be one of the recipients sure. in instant judgment. What's that verse? Um, if, if, he, if, a, if a being, it's talked to the of friends in this specific instance, but if a, a being attempts to exalt himself against God, that person you're talking about falls into that category. Yes. Yes. And this time, God's not going to brook any shortchanging of sure. his word. But then he goes on and talks about the prophets have to be careful also. Verse 19. <clears throat> and if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So if the prophet hears revelation from the angel and he speaks to the community and he takes something out, he's, he's lost. He's judged immediately. Uh, the judgment may not fall on him immediately, okay. but immediately he brings himself under judgment. So if a preacher chooses to not speak out the verses which tell the truth about various judgments within his sermon, so he, in other words, he only wants to give out the, com the comforty and, and fluffy bits, right? The, uh, the cotton yes. candy. Yes. But he doesn't tell the fullness of it. Yes. At that point, does that preacher fall into this category? Certainly. Certainly. <coughs> uh, in this day, in it, yes. Is there any repentance room? No. Oh, no, 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 no. No. So, I think what I'm trying to establish, and maybe you're thinking the same thing, is what we've just discussed, including the, the, the preacher who does exactly what we said, since this doesn't happen until a particular period of time, does that preacher have repentance room? You mean today? Yeah. Sure, he's under the grace okay. period. I think that's where you were going, right? <clears throat> if Joel Olstein suddenly decided that he was going to preach um, judgment, yeah. Yeah, he'd be forgiven because he's got grace period. This time, no. Right, he's in the age of grace. The new one, one minute after. That, that's it. That's it. No. Uh, there's no <clears throat> slipping and sliding. And uh, God will not brook anybody proclaiming anything other than the whole counsel of God. God. So he's not going to hear, well, what I meant was. No, know, no, no, no. no. I, I should have said. No, 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 no. So, Mr. Jones, what if, what if that same person decides to um, take a hiatus and not do what he's supposed to be doing as a, let's say, a pastor, or evangelist, teacher, whatever it is that his, his role is, he's, he's just sitting around waiting and you know, God will give me what I deserve. You know, so, so there you go. So, what do you say about that kind of guy? Oh, he's not going to make the rapture. Uh, maybe in the next lesson we have, we'll look at the promises. Guilty, I'm literally, I'm speaking out. Okay, we are an advanced group here. We have been ever mm -hmm. since we got started. Mm -hmm. There is no time for sitting around and waiting to see what's going to happen. We have to be pursuing something. Our, our calling, our ministry, mm -hmm. our, 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 our position in the body. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be pursuing. And if we are not pursuing, what can we expect? Well, what God says consistently is they're going to be judged by their doings. If a person falls out of line immediately, he is storing up wrath upon himself. It's just that it hasn't fallen completely at that time, but it's going to. And when this thing takes place, when you see <clears throat> the judgment pronounced of Jeremiah 25, it's because of all the things that are piled up in that person's life are suddenly going to, like Jesus said, to be a snare that's going to take them down. The things he himself has done. But the point is that nothing's going to happen to him until the end of the age of grace. Uh, not necessarily. Mm. Uh, the curses come on a person. 
You don't have no guarantee that nothing's going to happen. <laughs> Look at T.D. Jake and, and the rest of these guys. Right. Oh, that can overtake you and take you out, too. They're playing fast and loose. Uh, you know, with uh, God's grace. You can't do. Hmm. But as a rule, overall, the whole bunch are going to experience judgment as a group, according sure. to the scripture here. <clears throat> and in that respect, <clears throat> They're going to be their own executioner because the things they themselves have done are going to be the like Haman's gallows. Yeah. The things they built, that's what's going to be the things that take them out.